Today on the Skid Factory, we're replacing melted spark plugs and scratched heads with wires and data. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. This is John's 1977 XC Falcon Ute drag car. It's got a 351 Clevo, lots of good bits, a pair of 70mm turbos, all blowing through a methanol carby. If you've checked out our previous episodes, you'll see we've done a build review on it. It's a pretty nice bit of gear, all built by John. We then took it to the track to give it its maiden voyage. Let's say that it is a bit of, bit of a boat. Bit of a shakedown run to see what this new setup would do on the drag strip. And not surprisingly to me, it wasn't the greatest outcome. We had problems with melted spark plugs, we had bogging mid-track, all sorts of things were going wrong. And that's fine, that's what happens when you build a car and you've got to figure out how the tune works. But the problem with this is it's impossible to know what's wrong because there's no data and that data logging or anything. Uh, all you've got is some gauges to look at and um, you know, in the heat of the moment you usually can't see a lot of, of what's going on with them. <laughs> so the solution to this problem and probably to a lot of other people's problems is in this lemon squash coloured box here. You'll probably note that that looks a lot like a uh, Elite 550 to 950. It actually works on the same chassis, single plug ECU. But the difference with this is, is this is designed to run a carbureted or mechanically fuel injected car. And in this day and age that probably sounds like a silly idea because it's, fuel injection has been around that long and it's widely used now. But in reality a lot of people still do use carburetors for different types of class racing and also mechanical injection. Fuel injection in some, some classes is not allowed. But most of those cars would use uh, MSD, crane, whatever, ignition boxes to run their ignition system. Uh, particularly with methanol, you need a very powerful ignition system and um, those CDI units provide that. Usually they're coupled with a distributor with a bunch of leads, etc. A, uh, a coil that's capacitor discharge driven via the box. And then they start adding extra bits on it. So if you've got boost or nitrous, you want boost retard, you add a box that then says boost retard on it and you uh, fiddle around with that box so you end up making a bit of a daisy chain of stuff to, to try and um, tune the ignition system by itself which is um, sort of sounds weird to us dealing with modern cars so uh, I guess it did to the Haltech guys as well and that's where this came from. The basic operation of the VMS is, is pretty much exactly the same as any of the other ECUs. It is, the only difference is that it doesn't control fuel injection. It's, it still runs off crank angle sensor. You can still run eight cores as, in, as is in this case. And it also has multiple sensors that you can feed into it depending on your needs. It can also operate with CAN equipment such as um, wideband sensors uh, and Haltech Dash, which this car has along with all the other optional equipment that you can get from Haltech, such as IO boxes and that sort of thing. In this case, what we've done is um, John has removed, which I assume would have been an MSD box or a crane or something like that, one of those brands, um, and which would run with a distributor and leads. That's all been removed and John's fabricated a um, crank angle sensor for the off the crank pulley for it and added a cam sensor as well. So we can now operate the ignition system in um, full sequential mode. That's not really necessary. We could have just run a crank sensor, but this car runs on methanol and I was sort of a bit iffy about uh, methanol backfires, given the amount of fuel that, that spurts through these things and runs out the exhaust. So it's basically 12 plus one, which is a very common um, sensor setup, same as Toyota's. The rest of it is mainly just obviously we're driving LS3 coils in this case. Um, if you were doing this from scratch with no help from your mate Al, you'd probably get some IGN-1A coils from Haltech. Um, basically a similar sort of thing, but a, but a lot more powerful. But uh, in this case, I think the LS3 coils will be perfectly fine. But the rest of it is, is all about um, data logging. So 
we now have uh, sensors for fuel pressure, oil pressure. We've got a throttle position sensor on this car. Uh, and we've got an internal map sensor and also coolant temperature and pressure. So coolant pressure is something we've been using a lot lately, uh, particularly useful on boosted cars that, that um, are either at their limit of head clamping or never had very good head clamping at all, but at least you can see what's happening when it's being tuned. You can see if you're pushing too far or you've got too much timing in or you're making a mistake. Plus you can also see what's happened if there is a failure when you're running down the, the strip. So you don't get much time to think about anything once when you're driving a car like this down a drag strip. So this is going to record and log all of those things so you can analyze it later. And that's what we really needed at the time when we were at the strip. All we knew was what happened, which was burnt, melted spark plugs and basically a run that wasn't working properly. Uh, all we could assume was that it was running out of fuel, carburetor, so you don't really know what's happening. So bigger jets went in, still did the same thing, basically repeated that and it never really was fixed. So what we needed to know is, was the fuel pressure dropping? What other things were happening? So that's what this provides. To me, this is probably one of the simplest uh, wiring jobs you're ever gonna do. Uh, and I think it, it's much simpler than stacking CDI boxes on top of each other. Um, to try and achieve some sort of tuning control over the ignition system. Um, another thing that the Hoff pointed out to me when we were having a discussion about this was that uh, anything that runs a distributor, you, your timing advance and retard is, is basically governed by the, the size of your dist distributor cap and the, and the width of your rotor button. Anything out of that, your rotor phasing goes out and you cannot adjust, so you might want a lot of ignition advance, which an engine, old engine like this will want a lot of ignition advance. But once that boost comes up, depending on how much boost you're running, you need to back it out. And if that, if you back out, out that ignition off the, off the end of the rotor button, it's gonna go into the next, you're basically gonna fire onto a cylinder that's not meant to be firing. And that obviously causes a lot of damage or just makes it not run properly. So, um, there's, as with EFI, there's a ton of advantage to electronic control over ignition system and fuel system. In this case, we're using half of it and using the rest to uh, data log. Another big advantage of using the VMS is that it will plug directly into the Haltech IC7 dash via CAN and anything that this sees, processes and controls, you can see it on that dash. So it's a, it's a massive advantage over a monster taco, a shift light, and a mechanical oil gauge that leaks on your bonnet. I think it's time we take this bad boy down to see the Hoff, put it on the dyno and see what it can make. It's never seen a dyno ever, so it's gonna be interesting. And I've never seen a carburetor get tuned on the dyno, which is also gonna be, be interesting. I suspect there's gonna be a lot of screwdrivers, New Balance sneakers, cut off jeans, and fuel leaking everywhere. Let's go and have a look. Can we start it up first or not? Yeah, it goes. Once I plug this back in. I know methanol stings in nostrils, especially in its closed shed. It makes you look better. Oh. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> Sounds good, eh? Sounds like a methanol carbureted twin turbo V8. So, yeah, good. 
Except, so when, for, except for the carby. When do we go see the hop then? Uh, next week. Cool, alright. We're all sorted. The hop's going to get out his finest screwdriver and tune that bad boy up. So we didn't quite make it to the dyno. She developed a little bit of a knock when John was loading it onto the trailer to take it down. So the engine's out. That's racing for you. Turned out to just be the flex plate loose, but while it was out, John thought he'd given it freshen up. So next week you get to see what's inside a Clevo. Join us then, and thanks for watching. Dad, what's the carburetor? The carburetor is what they used to use before fuel injection was invented. Motorbox is still up carbies on them and mowers and shit. I'm trying to explain to him what a carburetor yeah, does. Yeah, I'm going to film it. This is a good outtake. Worst. <laughs> so it's like, if you imagine, like, you know, your, your toilet, and, like, the, the thing inside the toilet doesn't work properly, and it just leaks all the time, and water just keeps running through. Yeah. That's what a carby does. <laughs> Today on the Skid Factory, we're replacing melted spark plugs and scratched heads with dadder. Why don't you don't do the dadder? That's a Data monster. Um, uh, um, so, um, uh, 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 um, uh, um, so, uh, what? Oh, what? Take it off already. Oh. <laughs>